Welcome back, baseball fans. It's 2019. It's time for your Backyard Baseball League World Series between the defending champion Oakland Athletics and the rising stars, the Montreal Expos. It's Paul McMichael versus Jordan Helwig in a two out of three showdown for all the marbles. Extended highlights, scoring plays, and more coming at you. We're going to start in the first inning with the defending champion Oakland Athletics, Jeremy Turnham Burnham Burnett's with men on first and second. A ground ball to the right side. Right at Mark McGuire starting a quick double play, putting the A's in an early hole. Here's them versus the Padres' own offensive effort. Pablo Sanchez, a deep drive. Back into left field. Back, 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 back. And for all intents and purposes, gone. That ball hangs up long enough to get Barry Bonds in, and as Sidney Weber makes a diving effort, Pablo Sanchez scampers home. And inside the park, two-run bomb, A's are down, two to nothing, but the consolation prize, Annie Frazier dribbles into a double play as well, giving the A's a power-up heading into the second inning. Let's check back in with the Montreal Expos in their own second inning. Here's Dmitry Petrovic, the backbone of the Expos offense with a ground ball to the right side. Men on second and third, no outs. Jorge Garcia lays out, thrown not in time to first base, and one of the Weber Twins scores. I don't know, I don't know which one. Honestly, they look the same. Big chance for Conseco, but a swinging strike three with the bases loaded. That's it for the Expos through two innings. Ashley Weber in a critical moment. Remember, A's down two. Going to watch ball one, setting up this fake double steal. Marty Cordova gets in a rundown just long enough to score Jason Kendall. Now, we've got a runner on second with two outs. Ashley Weber will opt for the line drive, saving the aluminum power for something extra special. So she delivers on this Kenny Kawaguchi 1-0 delivery to the right side. Watch what happens here. Marty Cordova looking third. This is just good aggressive base running, folks. Annie Frazier makes a, a weak relay throw to Pablo, but... Pablo's one weakness is his height. Everybody knows it. On defense, that's going to happen. Marty Cordova scores, and that gets the A's out of that two-run hole early. A couple batters later, here's first and second. Derek Jeter, aluminum power right side. Only question, will it get up and out? No. That stays in the park, but it's going to be enough to score Ashley Weber. Luan Louis, safe on third. Derek Jeter sits one. But most importantly, it evens the athletics up with the Expos here in two. Caroline puts a ball in play. He misses McMichael to you. Luan Louise scores with two outs. Should it really count as two runs, though? Luan Louise, teddy bear? I don't know. We'll have to look into a rule change. That uh, aggressive base running isn't enough to squeeze another run across during that play, but the A's keep rolling. Here's the A's hidden gem, Jeremy Burnett's, with a ball ripped to the right side. Tony Gwynn struggling to find that ball. It's going to be enough to score Derek Jeter. Caroline safe at third. Once again, the A setting up for the fake double steal ploy. Totally legal. Game in the game within the rules. Here we have uh, Jeremy Burnett's committing to the steal at second base until this throw comes. But Caroline will score the A's sixth run of the inning, putting them ahead 4-1 to one over Montreal. And then with a man on second, Jason Kendall, two strikes, two outs. Here's a rip down the left field line, but... Ripken's been playing third base for like 20 years, and he played shortstop for 60 years before that. Here's the Expos in their own bottom of two, playing a little double play ball. This is too easy. Gretchen Hasselhoff posed it first. Raul monesi has been having a bad day. He sets up an easy double play for the Expos, so they've got a power-up coming in the third inning. But they are still down 4-1, down three here, bottom two. Kawaguchi's not typically a threat, but he is when he's got a screaming line drive to the right center field gap. Luan the Week can't handle that. They also can't get that ball in fast enough to keep Kawakin Jr. from scoring. Oakland's struggling to keep that run differential up. They're up 3-1 on the Expos. This is a big league moment out of Dmitry Petrovich. Top three Expos. Watches ball two. So close, but with that screaming line drive, you got to have play discipline. Petrovich's brains are so hot, his hair's on fire. That's why you want him here in this moment finding the right pitch, driving it down the right field line, 
Guerrero will score. And uh, in contrast to the, the A's, who have risky base running, the Expos have stupid base running. That's what you need sometimes. Something a little bit more than guts. The opposite of Petrovich baseball. Just darn dumb base running. That evens the score at threes. Sean Green in a high pressure situation. Second and third, one strike. Here's another ball. Scream to Mo's aluminum trailer. Sally Dobbs will score. That's a 4-0 tally. Again, ball out of play, pushes them to second and third. All of a sudden, Montreal's poised to do something pretty big in this inning. Lisa Crockett with men on second and third, puts the ball on the ground, trying to make something happen. Jorge Garcia puts himself on the ground. He can't make anything happen. Lisa's safe at first, Petrovic scores. That sets us up for this beautiful managerial blunder. So this pitching change prompts a little check behind the dish. Marky Dubois, of course, has a noodle. And Jose Canseco today is running slower than a fat kid on mulch. Here's a planned take with a double steal on. And uh, this is where this is where it all goes to pot. So Sean Green gets caught in a rundown. But with all of the clicking taking place, once Green is safe here, Lisa wanders off first and gets gunned down by Barry Larkin. That's going to happen 10 times out of 10. That puts an end to the threat. But Montreal regains the lead 5-3. And the A's are once again playing double play baseball. Mark McGuire is the easy target. Here's a little number to the mound out at second. And they do roll it up and get Mark McGuire at first base. So keep that in mind. Montreal again playing double play ball as well. But um, pulling off the rear one, two, six, three double play. There should be bonus points for that or, or a guaranteed aluminum power. I'm, I'm not sure. We head top four to the Oakland Athletics' next scoring threat. A screaming line drive into right center field with men on first and second. Ashley Weber will round third and score. Derek Jeter's going to coast into third. Caroline sits one. It's Expos five, A's four. One out later, Jason Kendall trying to push this to a tie ball game. He said he hits a weak fly ball to Cal Ripken Jr., and ends the scoring threat. Time's running out here for the A's. Playing defense again, not taking a break on these double play efforts. Jeff Bagwell starts turning this one. He throws across to get the speedy Ripken out first, and then, then there's this. This play, honestly, should be submitted to the Players Association and reviewed by the Ethics Board. If you're going to double Mikey Thomas off, you shouldn't make him run. How do you live with yourself? This is honestly cruel. Derek Jeter, I expected better from you in the first place. Here's Montreal playing defense in bottom five. Barry Larkin taps one up the middle. Lisa Crockett playing her position well. Sally Dobbs for the out at first, and they double off Raul Modesty at second. This is starting to become the tail of the tape, just a game of double plays and finding the right time to effectively use those power-ups. So here's the A's going back to the same strategy, looking for another double play. But Barry Bonds buries this one on top of Moe's aluminum trailer. Here we are, bottom five, the A's down 1-1. One, one. They've got to keep this run from scoring. This ball comes down from the trailer. Luan Louis can't locate it. It's bouncing around in right center field. They've got three, four fielders trying to relay before Barry Bonds scores. Two run home run. A's are down three in the fifth inning. The fifth is turned into a disaster for the A's, and Mark McGuire would only give them slight respite with uh, this double play to get the first and second outs of the inning. But at what cost? The A's now down three late in the game. Jose Canseco with a crazy bunt and a man on first. And you'll notice there's an aluminum power up there as well. But even with the successful crazy bunt, the trick with Tim Can Alley is that all of these power-ups are somewhat less successful small ballpark that's only going to get Jose Canseco to first and Ashley Weber on second base. Up next is team speedster Alex Gonzalez with a chance to put his team over the top. Crazy bunt still in effect for the Expos. Gonzalez looking for something he can handle. He puts down the crazy bunt. Ashley Weber is on her way to third. Canseco gunning for second. That ball finally dies out there at the green dumpster in right field. Ashley Weber trying to find fourth base. She thinks better of it. The Expos still have a lot to play with here in the top of the sixth inning. Up next, Expos legend Vladimir Guerrero. Two for three on the day with a couple singles, and still the crazy bunt is there. 
extremely fortunate for the Expos. They got a lot of firepower here. Another successful crazy bunt will score Ashley Weber. Jose Canseco, he's the real question mark here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna run as fast as I can, Seiko. Alice Gonzalez is a no-doubter for the third. Montreal now up by five over the defending champion Oakland Athletics. And now it's time for Sidney Weber to make a statement. Could my sister do this? A deep drive into center field that bounces around and it's gonna hang up long enough to score Gonzalez and Guerrero. Now it's just Sydney versus gravity. Who do you pick? I pick Sydney. This ball hangs up. Sydney rounds third. Scores for a three run bomb. Montreal Expos hit double digits. An eight run lead over the Athletics. Dmitry Petrovich delivers a 6,000 foot home run over the Empire State Building. That would be the totality of the Montreal Expos offense here in game one. Dmitry Petrovich's bomb brings the Expos to a 12-0 victory over the Milwaukee Brewers. Can the A's get back in this ballgame? They've got one inning to do it and no outs. Paul McMichael signaling to Ashley Weber, yeah, we want to go ahead and use the crazy bun. It doesn't matter. We don't have any outs. We're not wasting our time and taking any chances. The ball dies in right field. Ashley Weber maybe could have been safe at second, risking getting thrown out on our way back to first, but Annie says, no, you know what, I'll, I'll use my cannon some other time. Derek Jeter with the undergrounder, only one total use with the crazy bunt, and then on first and second, no outs, Derek Jeter buries this one under the concrete, but Kenny Kawaguchi plays it beautifully off the wall, and only Ashley Weber will score. They still have a long way to go in this inning. They're trying to pace themselves and not waste any outs whatsoever. Their risky base running takes a break. Jeremy Burnett's underground, base is loaded. And a swing and a miss, which takes no. away the final power up for the Oakland Athletics. They're now down nine runs in the top of the sixth. And no way to get back in this game other than good old fashioned baseball. Oh, Jeremy Burnett's fouls the ball off for strike two. Crucial moment, Mark McGuire looking in for the sign. Gets what he wants, he winds, kicks, delivers. Jeremy Burnett hits a number back to the mound. Pass Mark McGuire, Alex oh, Gonzalez gloves it in second, steps on the bag and tosses a bad throw home over Pablo Sanchez's head which will score Derek Jeter, Oakland down. Now seven runs to the Expos with Jeff Bagwell. Two strikes, two outs, men on first and second. Swing and a miss, strike three. That's it for game one. Expos win 12-5. We'll see you game two at Ekman Acres.